today I'm going to be doing a recording on a forces problem, a forces problem with movement, but not using kinematics. So it's forces with acceleration, but no kinematics. We're going to be on the flat, but we also will have angled forces. So this is a good practice problem for breaking up forces into their components. So the problem for today, you are pushing an 18 kilogram shopping cart out to your car and it's raining out. So you decide to run. You're pushing downward on the cart at 65 newtons at an angle of 15 degrees below the horizontal. So you're pushing down on the cart. And you're, you're running to get to the car fast because it's raining. If you can accelerate at 0.35 meters per second squared, what is the coefficient of friction between the cart and the street? Okay, so you should have your sheet with the problem solving process for forces. And like every single problem we've done, we start with a picture. So you are pushing a shopping cart. And okay, what does a shopping cart look like there? There's my shopping cart. And you're pushing it and you're running. Um, draw a picture. Figure out your knowns and unknowns. So I usually go through line by line through the problem and say, what is useful information? Well, it's an 18 kilogram shopping cart. And kilograms means it's a mass. Remember to don't confuse mass and weight. You're pushing downward at 65 newtons at an angle of 15 degrees below the horizontal. So you're pushing with a force of 65 newtons downward at an angle of 15 degrees. All right, you're running. You can accelerate at 0.35 meters per second squared. So your acceleration is 0.35 meters per second squared. That's all we know. Okay, so. What's our unknown? We are looking for the coefficient of friction. So picture knowns unknown. The next thing on our problem solving sheet is to choose the object of interest. And if you don't know if there's multiple things like here, are, is it you or is it the cart? If you're not sure, go with the thing you have the mass of because that's going to be the thing that you're going to want to do the forces on. So in this case, we have the mass of the cart. I mean, you probably know your own mass, but hey, uh, we want the mass of the cart. So we're going to choose the cart as our object. So that's our object. Draw a force diagram for the object of interest. Okay, so we're gonna draw forces acting on the cart. Start with the one that's always there. We have our weight, the force of gravity pulling down, which is mass times gravity. What's another one? Well, the ground is pushing up on the cart so it doesn't fall, and that's our normal force, perpendicular to the surface. We're pushing on it, but be careful, it's not a push straight, it's a push down. We said it was a push down at an angle. We were given an angle of 15 here, so we've got to keep that in mind. Anything else? Well, there better be, because uh, we're looking for the coefficient of friction, so I better have a coefficient, uh, I better have a frictional force here opposing the motion. There's my frictional force. All right, that is it. We have these four forces. What's next? Choose a coordinate system that aligns with the direction of the acceleration. Okay, we were accelerating in this direction. So we're accelerating in a horizontal direction. I'm choosing a coordinate system that matches with that. Next up, figure out if the forces are balanced or unbalanced in each direction. So here's Newton's second law again. Balanced forces mean no acceleration. Unbalanced forces, acceleration. We do have an acceleration in this direction. So in the x direction, we have unbalanced forces because we have acceleration. In the y direction, what's happening? Is there any motion up down? No, there's nothing happening up down, so those are gonna be balanced. All right, what's next? Now we are setting up a force table. Okay, so we have four forces, and we're gonna break them up into the x parts and the y parts, because just like with projectile motion, we have to treat horizontal and vertically separ vertical separately. So we're going to do a chart of our forces. Okay, so the force, what is the X component of it? What is the Y component? I've got weight as one of them. I've got my friction force. I've got the normal and the push. Uh, blue, okay. So I've got these four forces and I'm gonna separate them all out into their horizontal and vertical components. Three of them? pretty darn easy. Look at the normal force. That is straight up. That is all in the positive y direction. So my normal force 
There's no left-right component, so zero in the x-direction. All of it's in the y-direction, and it's all going up, so it's a positive force in the y-direction. The friction force, going backwards, there's no up-down to it, so there's no y-component, and it is going in the negative x-direction, so we have a negative friction in the x-direction. Weight is, most of the time, straight down, so nothing horizontal, and it's downwards. The weight is all in the negative y-direction. And then we come to the hard one. So with this force, we have a force of a push. We know how big it is, but don't put numbers in yet. And we know it's at 15 degrees below horizontal. And that was one of the things to keep in mind, below horizontal. You're pushing down on it. You're not pushing up on the cart. We need to break this up into components that match our coordinate system. So this is going to be my y component of that force. This is going to be the x component of that force. So this force is going right and down. We want to find how much of it is to the right, how much of it is down. And if we look at this triangle right here, my x component is this one. It's adjacent to the 15 degrees. Adjacent is the cosine. In which direction? We're going to the right. That's positive x. So my direction is positive. The force is the pushing force. And I just said it's the cosine component. All right. How about y? Well, it's going down, so my direction is negative. The force is my pushing force. And this is opposite the angle. This is going to be my sine component. OK, so this right here is most of the physics. This table and this right here, that's your physics. At this point, it really becomes just the math. And you can do that. So let's figure out what that math looks like. We are going to do Newton's second law in both directions. I'm going to erase this so I have a little bit of room. So Newton's second law in both directions. In the x direction, we said we have unbalanced forces. That means the net force in the x direction leads to mass times acceleration. There is acceleration. In the y direction, we have balanced forces. So the net force, oh man, these squeaky markers, is mass times acceleration. There is no acceleration up down. The forces all add up to zero. So let's come up with the equations for these. Add up all the forces in the x direction, set them equal to ma. Add up all the forces. We're just going down this chart. This is why we do the chart. Minus friction plus f cosine theta. That's all the forces. Now we set them equal to ma. Okay, so there is one of my equations. I'm going to get rid of this marker. So that was from the x direction. We have an equation with friction, my pushing force, my angle, mass, acceleration. Now we're going to do the y direction. Add them all up, and in this case, we're setting them to zero because they're balanced forces. So add up y's. We've got a negative w plus n minus f sine theta. We've added them all up. We're going to set them equal to zero. There is my second equation. And at this point is where I usually stop and say, what am I looking for in this problem? So I go back and I say, what's my goal? I'm looking for the coefficient of friction. There is nothing in here that has the coefficient of friction. I don't have an equation with mu in it. Or do I? So I say, all right, we know this equation. We can always use the fun equation. So I'm going to say we have a third equation, the fun equation. That's got what I want in it. And at this point, we have three equations. This is unknown. Our frictional force is unknown. Our normal force is unknown. We do know everything else. Three equations, three unknowns, solvable. If we're going to do this, I need more space. Don't I need more space? So while I'm erasing, you can start thinking about how we might put these three equations together. There's lots of different ways to do it. And if you do something that's slightly different from my path, that's fine. We should still come up with the same answer. I'm going to show you the way that I typically solve these friction problems, because it's, it's just a way that I find is very easy to do, no matter what the friction problem looks like. So, ooh, keep going. OK. This is the hard part about this. So I have three equations. And what I like to do when I have friction is solve one of the equations for friction equals. Solve another one for normal equals, 
And then I can replace f and n in this equation with what I've got. So let's give it a try. I want to solve for friction equals. And if I bring that over, bring the ma over, f cosine theta minus ma. Solve this for normal. So bring both of these two over to the other side. Normal is weight plus f sine theta. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop this into here, and I'm going to pop this into here, and see what we get. So friction is f cosine theta minus ma equals mu, don't lose that mu, that's a really common mistake, mu times the normal w plus f sine theta. Okay, so let's see what this gets me. What do I know in this case? This is the pushing force, which I know. I know my angle, I know my mass of the cart, I know my acceleration, I'm looking for mu, this is my question mark, weight. Well, weight is, oh, weight is mg, I know my mass, and I know my acceleration, okay, pushing force, angle. At this point, we have everything in the equation except for mu. So you can put in the numbers, and if you do that, you should come out with a coefficient of friction of... 0.29 and coefficient of friction it's a coefficient it's just a number there's no unit associated with it so that makes sense because we're we end up dividing newtons by newtons it's typically between 0 and 1 so again that makes sense this is kind of small I would that's a really smooth surface let's say <laughs> the streets are very smooth they're the par good parking lot uh, so we've got all that it's a reasonable number correct units did we answer the question the question is, what is the coefficient of friction between the cart and the street? We've answered it. We've got it all. So there you go. There's an example of a force problem with some angled forces and an acceleration, standard coordinate system, and all the friction stuff as well. All right. Good job.